Hey folks, this is JR with DIY Prepper. Welcome to the channel. When it comes to preparing for natural disasters or other emergencies, one of the biggest concerns for a lot of folks is having backup power. And whenever the topic of that comes up, there's a lot of disagreement and misunderstanding around the types of generators out there. You have some folks that'll swear by gas, while others are just as adamant that solar is the way to go. But the bottom line is that they both have advantages and disadvantages. Your own unique personal situation, like where you live and even the type of disaster you're dealing with, can determine which one will work the best. And because of that, I like to incorporate both into my preps. Doing that will help me enjoy the benefits of each without being held back by the weaknesses of either one. Here I have an EcoFlow Delta 3 Plus along with their new Dual Fuel Smart Generator 3000. And this is a topic I've wanted to revisit for a little while now, so I asked EcoFlow to send their new smart generator, and they were nice enough to do that. But before we go any further, though, I would like to thank them for doing that and also for sponsoring this video. So getting into the pros and cons of gas and solar generators, gas generators are useful since they can run for as long as you have fuel. If you run out of gas or propane, if it's dual fuel, all you need to do is add more gas or hook up a different propane tank, and you can be up and running in just a couple of minutes. But the flip side to that is that once you run out of fuel, you can't use the generator at all until you can get more. And if you're snowed in, dealing with a widespread disaster or the alpacalypse, doing that could be a big problem. Fuel-based generators tend to be less expensive, at least up front, but once you start stockpiling fuel and having to do maintenance on them, then your cost savings disappear very quickly. For maintenance, you'll have to do oil changes periodically and also troubleshoot it if it won't start. Then, all fuel-based generators produce exhaust and carbon monoxide. This means that they absolutely cannot be used inside of your home, and that also includes garages and even non-enclosed carports. They really should be at least 20 feet or more from the outside of your home. That'll reduce the chances of harmful fumes getting inside, and it'll also reduce the risk of fire. Then, fuel-based generators are also loud. Even quiet inverter-type generators still produce enough noise to let your neighbors and anyone else nearby know that you have a backup power source, and that could be a big concern if you're dealing with a more serious situation. Then, even though this isn't a safety issue, many campgrounds prohibit the use of generators due to the noise that they produce. Many portable gas generators, especially the more traditional non-inverter types, are also pretty stinking heavy and will need at least two people to load into the back of a truck or SUV. Solar generators, though, are a whole other animal, the biggest difference being that they don't use a finite fuel source. While they don't technically generate any power, they can store energy collected by solar panels or other external sources, like power from a home wall outlet, your car's 12-volt outlet, or a fuel-based generator. And since they can collect and store energy from the sun, a solar generator can give you a viable long-term energy source long after you've run out of gas or propane. And y'all, if you're wanting to pick up a solar generator or anything else I show in this video, then be sure to visit EcoFlow's websites using the links and discount codes in the description below. They're currently running a Valentine's Day promotion from now until February 23rd, where you can save up to 57% off and you can use my code for an additional 5% off as well. Another big advantage that solar generators have, though, over traditional fuel-based ones is that they're safe to use indoors. Since they're entirely electric, they don't produce any harmful fumes. You can literally put one right next to your bed to charge electronics or power medical devices like CPAP machines. Then, power stations and solar panels don't have nearly as many moving parts as traditional generators, and the moving parts that they do have are small and not subject to the same forces as the ones found in an internal combustion engine. As long as you don't let them stay at too high or too low of a charge for long periods of time, they should work for years without any other maintenance. I've had several solar generators over the years, and I've never had an issue with getting one to start. The biggest issue that I've had with one was the display got scrambled, but even with that, it was still outputting power and recharging just fine. Then solar generators are also quiet, which further contributes to making them suitable for indoor use, helps with security, and allows them to be used in places that fuel-based generators aren't allowed. The biggest disadvantage to a solar generator, though, is that they don't work if you don't have sunlight. This is a consistent issue in some locations, but it can happen anywhere depending on the weather. You may also find yourself in a situation where you're needing more power than your panels are collecting, and in those sort of situations, having a fuel-based generator to complement your solar generator would be very useful. That way, you're not totally dependent on either one. 
then using a gas generator to charge a power station uses less fuel than using that generator to power appliances and devices directly. For example, a Delta Pro 3 by itself should be able to power my old inefficient fridge and box freezer for around 18 hours. The Solar Generator 3000 can run on a single 20 pound propane cylinder for around 11 hours at full load, and since the Delta Pro 3 can handle up to 1800 watts from a standard wall outlet, you can recharge it from 0 to 100% in just a few hours. So in practical terms, that means that if you use the smart generator to charge a power station, you can basically use around a third of a propane cylinder to power my fridge and box freezer for around 18 hours. And for the past few years, solar power stations have been my primary go-to power power option during emergencies. Most of the power outages we have are pretty short and they can be handled by a larger power station without even needing to be recharged at all, but for longer power outages, using a fuel-based generator to recharge them is actually something that we've done. It's just a lot faster than solar panels and the generator can power other things while it's recharging a power station. Now, before I got the Solar Generator 3000, we used a Champion Dual Fuel 3800. It was the first generator I ever owned, and we got it a couple of months after the 2021 Texas ice storm. Even though we, by some miracle, didn't lose power, a lot of folks that we knew did, so it was a big wake-up call. And since it's dual fuel, it can run on both gas and propane, and I liked it since it could run my most important appliances, and it was also fairly fuel efficient. I didn't have a transfer switch, so it didn't make sense to buy like a big 10,000 watt unit that would just burn more gas than what I needed to run a couple of things. Then it also had electric start, which was nice as well, but even though it's been mechanically reliable, it isn't a perfect solution. First, since it isn't an inverter type generator, it isn't ideal for powering devices with sensitive electronics, and power stations definitely fit into that category. Even though it has a built-in surge protector, I've tried to limit how often I've used it with my power stations just because of that. Then this particular generator, since it's a more traditional open frame model, is pretty heavy at around 100 pounds. And this is where EcoFlow's Smart Generator 3000 comes in. I asked for him to send this to us to take a look at because I think it solves a lot of the problems I have with my old generator, and some of y'all may be in the same boat. In the box, you get the generator, propane hose, oil funnel tool kit, and paperwork. The spark plug and electric start battery are already installed, although you will need to plug the battery in before you use it. The battery is also a lithium battery, meaning it'll have a lower self-discharge rate than the lead-acid battery that came with my other generator and the battery in this one should also have a longer lifespan as well. In addition to being recharged while the generator is operating, it can also be recharged using a DC5521 port on the front. And the Smart Generator 3000, like my other one, is dual fuel, meaning it can run on either gas or propane. It can produce up to 2,000 running watts using gas or 1,800 running watts using propane. And when it comes to these dual fuel generators, you're always going to get a little bit more power from gas just because it has a higher energy density. It has an onboard gas tank that'll hold four liters or just over one gallon of gas, and that'll allow it to run for around 3.3 hours if you're running the generator at full load or for around nine at a 25% load. Between the two though, the 3.3 hours is a little more realistic since most folks are gonna be using this with the larger power station that can handle up to 1800 watts of input. Then the generator can run for around 11 hours at full load on one 20 pound propane cylinder. It comes with the very nice propane hose with a quick connect and disconnect that'll click right into place and pop right off. But one of the biggest advantages that this generator has over my other one is that it's an inverter type generator and this means a couple of things. First, it's going to be safer to use with my power stations. Inverter generators produce cleaner energy than open frame ones. They don't have as many voltage fluctuations, which makes them a lot easier on sensitive electronics. Then inverter generators are also a little quieter. Even though it does produce noise, it's going to carry a shorter distance than the noise from my other one. Smart Generator 3000 is also much lighter. It only weighs around 48 pounds when empty, and that makes it a lot easier to load into my truck, especially if I'm on my own. But what really sets this one apart from other generators is that it's been specifically designed to recharge power stations. You can use the EcoFlow app to connect it to EcoFlow power stations, which will allow them to communicate with one another via Bluetooth. The Smart Generator 3000 will then turn on automatically to charge your power station whenever it drops below whatever power level you specify or at specific time intervals. You can use the app to set all this up however you like. Then you can also start it remotely from the app or by using the power button on the front of the device or its pull cord. 
Smart Generator 3000 also comes with different features to help keep you, your home, and the device itself safe. It'll shut down automatically if it detects high levels of carbon monoxide, excessive heat, an overload, or low oil. And it'll also send you a notification when you're low on fuel oil or just need to change the oil out. It comes with two AC ports and the DC5521 port I mentioned earlier for recharging its onboard battery. And just having two AC ports actually makes a lot of sense when you consider what this generator is for and its power output. Having standard outlets rather than using something proprietary allows you to use it with any power station you own, including those from other brands. Even though it won't be able to communicate with third-party power stations, it'll still turn itself off automatically when they're fully charged since it can detect a drop in output wattage. Also, even larger power stations like a Delta Pro Ultra are only designed to handle around 1800 watts from a standard outlet since that's the upper end of, of what most of those outlets can handle anyway. So using their large 7200 watt output would be an expensive waste of space. It's also important to keep in mind that this is their smaller smart generator and it was really designed to be used with mid-sized power stations like this Delta 3 Plus. And what's nice about that pairing is that it's a fairly inexpensive way to enjoy the best of both worlds when it comes to fuel-based options and solar power options. The Delta 3 Plus can produce up to 1800 running watts and 2200 surge watts, which is enough to run almost anything in your home, including refrigerators, freezers, and washing machines. Having a decent set of panels along with the Smart Generator 3000 will allow you to keep these and other important devices running in a wide range of emergency situations. And while prices on these change regularly, while I was making this video, the price for both together were only around like $1,600. Now, that doesn't include the price of solar panels, but once you add those, you could still have a viable emergency backup power system for less than $2,000. So it's a great option for people who can't afford a whole home system, but still want something with a lot of capability. Smart Generator 3000 also comes with a very nice LCD screen that'll show you how much fuel you have left. And I'm a big fan of that since I've always struggled to tell how much fuel I have left, especially in like a propane tank. This will tell you that in nice big letters right on the front along with how much output it's producing and how much run time it has left. Then the Smart Generator 3000 also comes with a two year, 500 hour warranty. Now, it is important to understand that the Smart Generator 3000 won't be able to run your home directly since it isn't rated for higher wattage amounts and it only has 220 volt AC plugs. I can see that being a problem for folks if they're wanting to run a lot of other devices while charging their power station, but I think the key to this is to just not let your power station get too low. Very few of us are running 1800 watts continuously and since it can communicate with EcoFlow power stations, as long as you have everything set up correctly, it really shouldn't be an issue. Now, if you think you'd like a setup like this or any of EcoFlow's other products, then be sure to use the links and codes in the description below. Now, if you wanna see my full disaster energy plan, then click here. Or if you wanna see how to make an EMP proof lights out kit, then click here. Once again, I'd like to thank EcoFlow for sponsoring us today. Thank y'all for stopping by. Y'all have a good one.